Now boarding. This is a game presented by Fower Games and it is a game of pickup and delivery. Also it is cooperative. All players work together. They control modern airlines and they will be uh, picking up and delivering uh, grumpy passengers and we'll try to do it as fast as possible pre before these passengers lose their patience and write strongly worded emails to the company headquarters. If the players are able to to keep the wrath of the passengers at bay and they can deliver them fast enough then the players win the game. Now uh, the play the game is played in rounds each round is preceded by a planning phase in which the players can decide what to do then they will actually resolve the phase in real time with a limited amount of time and the timer that you use depends on the number of players. Each player will have an airplane. The position of the airplane is marked on the map by a wooden token and then the capability of the airplane are represented by this adorable display. These parts uh, with these uh, symbols here represent the unique connections that the airplane can fly. Here the section represents where you place your passenger, each session, the section that you have of this kind allows you to carry a passenger and here the number that you see represents the number of spaces that the airplane can move each round. You will be able during the game and you should purchase upgrades that will change the shape, size and most importantly capability of your airplane. For each section that you have with different symbol now there are more unique connections that you can fly that you can use to fly for each section such as this one then you can carry more passengers for example now I'll be able to carry three and you can also increase the speed of your airplane by adding tiles such as that one so now I can move five connections so ooh, pretty pretty good but it can be a kind of like catch-22 because in order to upgrade your airplane you need to deliver passengers and it's and what is really good to to be able to deliver passengers to do it successfully to have a good airplane total catch-22 now here you have the board uh, that represents all different places where the players will try to deliver their passengers. So players will start from different locations. Their connections, some are white connections and any airplane can use them and some are connections with those symbols, with those brands and then only players that have that symbol on their airplane will be able to use them. So sometimes you have to fly around things in weird non-direct paths because you don't have the right symbols. We have passenger cards. The back of the card tells you where the passenger starts and so and then you have a player that tells you how many passengers are want to fly that that round and so you will simply set up by adding those cards face down and there may be cards that are still face up in different places from previous rounds suppose that we have that one there in JFK that was there from a previous round and it has an anger token on it we'll see what that means when and again there will be different rounds so there is a schedule that is indicated here on the pre flight to the number of available passengers depends on number of players and the game is divided in three phases morning afternoon and evening again with different numbers of passengers that will flood the board each each phase each round of each phase and there will be more and more the the schedule of arrival of the passengers will accelerate making things more interesting also at the beginning of each phase you will have weather uh, changes, weather changes that will be determined by using random cards and that means that you may have connections in which the weather is bad and you place it there as you can see that token pretty much increases the number of stops on that connection or then you can also have nice weather that quite the opposite covers one of those and so now makes it easier to go from one location to another now between Atlanta and JFK we only have one stop or one spot instead of two 
So at the beginning of the round, you will place new passengers on the board. The players make plans and then they flip them face up. And then all players go together. Basically, you can pick up play passengers at the airport where you are as long as you have available slot available slots on your aircraft and say I decide to pick up that one. Picking up passenger is a free action. I suppose my aircraft is also smaller than it is because it's kind of cute in the way. So for a free action you can pick up a passenger where you are and then I decide to move one, two, three, four and I pick up this other guy and then five and that guy wants to go to Atlanta. And that would pretty much with five moves that would be that for my turn. Next turn, maybe I go to Atlanta and I deliver that guy who wants to go to Atlanta and I place it in my play area. I can also decide to drop people off uh, where there where is not their final destination just because somebody else of my my friends will come and pick them up. Maybe they're on the way to go to Denver and that kind of stuff. So I can drop them off. Uh, picking up a passenger also is good because if they have anger tokens on them, you discard them uh, because they're just happy to fly. That also means that sometimes the passenger that wants to go to Denver is there, but because of destiny, the passenger is brought all the way here. Somebody picks her up and somewhere else. But every time that they fly and actually move, they will lose their anger token. That's how easily you can dupe these passengers. Uh, of course, that means you cannot just pick up somebody, remove the tokens and put them down there. They will clog your aircraft until you bring them somewhere and then you drop them off. Anger tokens. At the end of each round, uh, each passenger that is still on the board, face up, will receive an anger token. If they receive four, that is when they are so mad that they will go and write a strongly worded email. You remove them from the board, you place them aside. If you have a half three of these dissatisfied customers, the players lose the game. At the end of a round, also, you can use the passengers that you delivered. As you can see, they're all associated with an amount of of super mega magic dollars and you can spend those super mega magic dollars to buy upgrades and here you have the cost for example to add to add seats to your airplane to be able to transport more people well depends on how many you already have you can also buy a temporary token then you can only have that extra uh, seat for one turn you can use different connections here and here you can also increase your speed as you can see again the more you upgrade a certain type of upgrade the harder it gets and then I just want to give you a closer look at the board at the connections just that you see again how some connections are general neutral some are specific you continue like this until you uh, possibly delivered all of the passengers that you have to deliver based on the number of players to win the game and if you do so ta-da you win the game otherwise if too many passengers leave the board because you're annoyed you and all the other players collectively as a team lose the game now now boarding is pickup and delivery and cooperative gameplay done right. The fact that you play in real time really helps with two aspects that sometimes can mar the experience of playing pickup and delivery games and or cooperative games. For the cooperative games, you know the problem, the alpha player, the player that is experienced and tells everybody what to do. You may still have this here, but with the fact that you're playing real time and there's a lot of information that is available only when uh, when the real time segment starts it means that even the alpha player won't be able to probably calculate everybody and push everybody around to um, to do what he or she says. So players will be able to bring their contribution to, okay, wait a second, I'm here, I'm gonna grab this this player here, I'm gonna grab this traveler here, etc, etc. So uh, I like that. So, and, and real time cooperative games really usually work well against the problem of the alpha player. And pick up at delivery, those can be really fun game, but they can be usually optimized with a lot of thinking. And if you have a player that really wants to play optimally and wants to do a lot of thinking, then analysis paralysis can become a problem and everybody else is like, ah, oh, take your move already.
Not here. Well, if another player will have analysis paralysis, yes, the group will be affected, but the gameplay will not be delayed because that simply means that the player hasn't done anything. I guess there could be a possibility in which the analysis paralysis player will be a pain in the neck during the discussion phase, but unless I still but at, at least you can still tell them, look, there are just many more cards that we don't see, so it's, there's no point in overthinking this. And I really actually like this balance here between the planning you can do, the game is not completely random, and yet the part in which you just have to swing it, you have to just go zen through it, breeze through and see what happens because of all of the uh, changing factors. Uh, so mechanically it's just fun to play, it's fun to make a plan and then see it totally uh, become, I would say pointless, but, uh, but outdated a second later by the new group of plays that you have there, and pretty much you're scrambling there to remake, not a plan, but to embrace the process of planning. I think it was Eisenhower that said, plans are nothing, planning as a process is everything, and now boarding does that. If you don't have a plan, planning is hard, but if you only have plans, you still need to do the planning as the game evolves. It's fun stuff. Then also, uh, thematically, um, the theme is not necessarily the main thing here, and yet somehow it works, uh, especially if you fly um, frequently, uh, you know, or, or you fly, or you fly recently. Uh, there's almost a satirical element here. You're like, oh, is this how companies actually operate? Because I'm like on the West Coast and I'm trying to go to the Midwest and I'm being dropped in JFK and then down there in Florida so that I can then be dropped in the Midwest. Could it be that they just want to move me around so I have the illusion that I'm making progress? Now, in real life, of course, if they do that to you too much, um, you're still gonna get anger cubes, real life anger cubes. Uh, in the game, it's a little more simple than that. As long as they're in the air, they are a swash for, <laughs> their wrath is a swash for, for a time. But sometimes you're shuffling them around, just giving them the bare minimum service so that they don't uh, they don't get too mad. I almost wonder if I, I don't know if that's how companies work, but it does feel like a fun uh, and funny satire of of air transportation, I guess. So in general, no boarding. No boarding is definitely a fun game. Now it's a cooperative game, and many cooperative games can be played solo. This one cannot. Unless, I guess, you're playing with, I don't know, a ton of cards, like as if you were four players uh, and you give yourself then time to think about it, but I don't, I don't see the reason to go there. Find a list of friends and play no boarding. It is fun, it has interesting decisions, it is fun and frantic and crazy when the real time starts, but it, well, it's chaotic but not completely overwhelmed by chaos thanks to the um, planning phase that you have. In general, no boarding just a lot of fun.